Yo, what's up aliens? Aki here with another tutorial. So today it's going to be all about swing. I'm going to be giving you all my best advice on how to get swing into your beats. Make sure you stick around for the whole video because I'm going to go through a bunch of different examples and I think that by learning all of them it's going to help your creativity a lot. And if you haven't liked and subscribed already, go ahead and do that right now. All right, so you've probably seen a couple other YouTube videos on how to get swing into your beats and it's probably used things like Ableton's groove pools uh, which got one here you know I think that they're very good and you can see that they're off the beat there and whatnot and then you've probably other seen videos on using this uh, little button here and moving the track delay and that sort of shifts everything like in time that way and I think that those are really useful but I want to introduce a technique that you may not have thought of uh, I have talked about this technique in other videos, but um, I think in the context of swing, it's sort of a new video. So let's check this out. You know, it's like when you were a kid and you'd take like a, a leaf and some paper and a crayon and you'd like put the leaf down uh, and then put the paper over it and then rub it with the crayon and like the pattern of the leaf would show up on the paper. It's like that, but with music making. All right, so here I've got an Ellis Dream track. Uh, peace, love, and wubs. And I love this song so much. So let's try to figure out what's going on with the swing on this track. Sometimes with swingy tracks, it's hard to figure out where the downbeat is because of the swing. Uh, but sometimes I'll align it up where I'll find the first kick of the drop. And then I'll line that up here to the downbeat. And then I'll check, you know. Okay. That makes it so that way the snares are off, but also you could adjust it so that way the snare is on the downbeat and then the kick is now just early. So a good way to check that and see what is more likely in the groove of the track is to align it up either to the kick or the snare. I've done it to the snare now. Um, and pull out the track all the way and see sometimes uh, in master tracks there's a little bit of silence at the beginning and yeah we can see here so if we line it up to the kick it looks like this at the very beginning yeah I would say that let's line it up with the kick like right about there now let's go through and align uh, like we have this kick drum let's take a kick drum here and then we'll use that to copy this pattern. So again, it looks like the kick is slight, ever so slightly shifted forward in time. So we'll layer that that way. And then let's listen for all the kicks. So there's a little swing bit right there. So let's look for that downbeat you can almost see the transient right there. Get that back in alignment. And then this one, is that on the downbeat? No, slightly off there. And there's another one right there. That one seems to be up just slightly ahead. You can see that zero crossing point right there. That's generally where the transient's gonna be. All right, let's see if this alignment sort of works over from one bar to the next um, yeah I would say it does so let's see, let's see. Oh. so second phrase gets really good. oh but it gets that little skippy bit right there let's see if copying and pasting from this same off timing to this off timing see if that lines up which i think it does yeah oh actually you know this one might be a little bit faster on the transient right there right at the zero crossing point which is the point in which the speaker is flat it's not moving forward or backwards Okay. So there we go. We've got our little phrase of the kick there. And I'm going to go through and adjust that so that way that transients a little bit forward. Great. 
Oh, looks like this one. It's a little bit later, actually. Look at that. Let's see, how do these adjust? Those look good. How's that? Oh, it's even further. And see, this is another thing I want to talk about is drift. Is that sometimes, well, I'll see like a really good groove, is that over time, the drums will either slightly shift from one direction to another and sort of like, you know, all these imitating like all these musicians where they've got their own internal time, but then at important loop phrases, they all sort of get closer back on time. So over time, they'll like start to drift out of time and then come back on time. And that's another important concept that I wanted to get across in this tutorial. Again, yeah, slowly lining everything up. Um, and now we could do that with uh, the snare as well. Let's see, I bet the snares are pretty on beat, but, or they could be delayed a little bit. Let's see, yeah, because we had that, yep. They are delayed a tad right there. Oh, because also with the sample, you want to make sure that you get the, see the zero crossing right there, right there. Cool. Now let's see if they're all equally delayed like that. Be another transient right there for the snare. Let's see. Well, it's slightly even later that drift I was telling you all about. All right, let's copy and paste to see if they are aligned up. Again, look at that slightly further back, just ever so slightly, you know? Ever so slightly back again. Yeah. That drift, let's see here. How far does the drift go? How far does it go? See, is this lined up now over here? There we go. And then I bet we could loop this and then that, that could work right there. So now let's listen to this. High so we can see it's happening right here. So you can almost see the zero crossing point right 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 there or maybe right here but you can see that the excitement in the high end is all this extra thick mess right there line them up so there is a hi-hat on the down as well and look at that almost got that lined up let's see here you think it's here here sometimes you gotta guess and play around with it and with these you can generally just copy and paste them maybe there's a little bit of drift in them as well oh let's see here also i usually like to align the when they are um uh when they are off beat i like to align the hi-hat and the kick or the hi-hat and the snare i just feel like it helps uh give a cohesive sound yeah Get that lined up right there. Cool. Now let's give our beat a listen. How do we do? That's pretty good, yeah? Ah, I like it. You know, uh, now let's let's do this just to show the difference of like what it would sound like if it was just like a pure, purely unswung beat. Not bad, but this is. That's got some swing in it and it's got some drift in it. Another example here is this Subtronics track, uh, Hieroglyph, which, ah, uh, this one's so good. So you can hear almost this like breathiness on the snare. And I think that that's pretty interesting. I think that that sort of like 
almost contributes to the swing a little bit because it's like, you know, it's got some fade out there uh, to the beat. And then also the hi-hats are a little delayed a little bit. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to line everything up and do that same process. Kicks on the kicks. For this beat, they're like pretty much forward like on the downbeats and I think this is another thing with like some dance music is that the kicks and snares can be more aligned but then everything else around it can be a little bit uh, more wonky and I think that it's really this combination of these sort of delayed hi-hats in relationship so like the downbeat will be on beat but then the offbeat will be offbeat so sort of like that I think we can copy that over and let's give ourselves a listen. Well, though, actually, let's check this out first, too. Again, I've got this like sort of breathiness uh, from a noise, and it's being faded out. And so now when we play our beat, it sounds like this. But then here we could play around with these delays. That gives it so much swing. I love using the delays. You notice how the hot, the breaths like give it like, you know, sort of adds the swing. So it's not always. It's sometimes it's about the subtle effects and whatnot that contribute to the swing. It's not always just in the drums. And that's why I wanted to, wanted to show you all this cool example. Another way to do it is just use dope samples from splice or other breaks you know like there's nothing wrong with just using a dope sample sometimes i like to give it my own sort of flavor so you know i'll grab it and then mix it in with some like heavier drums like this i just wanted to give it more of like a straight dubstep kind of feel for this one but still have like that the swing to it another way to get some swing is to swing your bases and this is where uh, I get to sponsor myself today which I have a new product that just came out called uh, LFO shapes uh, volume 2 all about swing look at this amazing beauty amazing art <laughs> um, but yeah it is a LFO uh, a serum LFO shapes bank um, that was actually inspired by I met LS Dream uh, backstage at a show recently and he uses the volume one of them of the LFO shapes in his music and he really wanted one that had swing to it so uh, I was like that's a great idea I should go ahead and do that so I did and now here we are All right, so let me show you some of these they are swing bunch of them in here got some hi-hats also some random melody things in there uh, some really simple swing things those are really good for rhythm and then these are all sorts of cool shapes so here let me show you how it works basically I just put it on whatever LFO is controlling the volume but here's what it sounds like Cool, so you could go through and cycle. You can hit option and it'll cycle through these. Then you could like fill that in with other bases in there. I wanted to give a lot of space. One. You know, this, yeah, this one's one of my favorites. This one I may want to speed up a bar. Watch this one. You know, you could then even just using this on like a saw wave, like that's like super distorted, 
is pretty fun. You know, you could then add these to the melody, which I'm going to put it on the semitone there. Let's try adding in a melody. I've never done this before. What? Let's put it on off mode so it runs all the way through. Oh my god, I've never done this before. That's so trippy. That's pretty good, like, you know? Okay, right, let's switch up the... Oh, no, no, we don't want to do that. Uh, let's switch this up. Oh, dang, I want to make that into a song. I got to remember this. Which one is this one? Oh, man. I don't know, that one back there was pretty sick. I don't know. I hope you all enjoy these. Uh, all right, another thing that you could do is uh, maybe we can get rid of that background thing and let's just like turn this into uh, some drums. You know, so that way we just get like some white noise, some bright white noise, and we'll apply the LFO just to that. And then we'll just listen to that, but put it on a high pass. All right, but let's put in some of these hi-hat swings. Yeah. Oh, that's so sick. Cycle through some of these. Oh my god. Oh, triplet ones. Triplet swung. Let's slow that down and see what that does. Oh my god. That's so sick. Oh my god. Oh. Anyways, you see there can be a lot of different uses for this pack. So I'll provide a link below of where y'all can get that uh, on my Gumroad. It's only 10 bucks. I wanted to make sure everyone could get it if they wanted it. And if you haven't gotten the volume one already, uh, definitely recommend both. Both of them are super useful. Um, it's going to be a lot of different presets for y'all to choose from in there, or I should say LFO shapes. I think it's going to open up a whole new realm of creativity for y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a, a like and a subscribe. Maybe tell a friend about it. So by the way, I'm going to be playing in these places this summer. Lots of big festivals. Super excited about it. Hope to see y'all out there. All right. Peace, aliens.